been putting together this rapture video and it's taken me some time. I've done a lot of prayer about it. I've done a lot of study. Um, I have a lot of clips in here from other thoughts I've had and the scriptural study that I went through about the rapture. It's been a real struggle to put this video together, but the Lord really wants me to present these ideas to you. Um, he is not pleased with the lie that was given to us in the Left Behind series. So there is a predominant belief that the rapture is going to be something like the Left Behind series. And I don't believe it's going to be like that at all. And I also don't believe there's two raptures. So it occurred to me finally the other day when I was thinking about this over and over and how to present this and how when I talk about there not being a rapture before the tribulation, I get, you know, people unsubscribe and don't like and, you know, they tell me I don't have any faith. And that pre-tribulation rapture lie that was perpetrated in that novel is a lie. It's a lie. And if you don't believe that, you're going to be trapped. You won't be ready emotionally and prepared for what we need to go through very, very soon. So <clears throat> I believe that three and a half years will be starting around Passover 2021. And it's not going to be that obvious. Uh, but I do believe the abomination will already be in place um, with their whatever it's going to be, their electronic um green card that we have to have, you know, that maybe just Israel adopts at first, which it already adopted, actually, and starts on February 21st. But uh, what occurred to me, so it's so clear in Matthew 24, that immediately after the tribulation, Jesus ascends, and the trumpets blow, and the call support the elect from the winds of the earth. So there's either two raptures, which is not biblical at all. That secret rapture idea came from a girl in a trance in England or Scotland. I mean, it's really evil. That means it's a lie. And it's going to try to trap you so that you're not ready. And you haven't prepared anything. You haven't got your ark ready. Um... So it's really on my heart to tell you again, please look up those scriptures. There's no secret rapture, okay? There's just no secret rapture. There's one rapture. There's one rapture where we get called up. And all the rapture scriptures except one talk about it being on the last trump. And so left behind series cannot be correct unless there's two raptures. Because if a bunch of saints get raptured up right before the tribulation and these other saints are left to go through the tribulation because they weren't ready. That's the whole idea in the Left Behind series. They weren't ready, so they had to suffer through the tribulation. Um, and then they're raptured. They'd be raptured then right after the tribulation because there's a rapture. There is a rapture right after the tribulation. So there's either one rapture or there's two. And there's not two. There's only one. There's only one where we're snatched up and we go. So does this mean that we're all hiding from the Antichrist, um, you know, which, in my opinion, has been made into too much power? The Lord is the one that has the power, and I'm going to explain it in this video over and over, how the Lord is the one with the power and that whole Left Behind series was created with lies from the enemy to try to make you too afraid of the enemy. Because you know you should be afraid of is the Lord your God. You fear the Lord your God and you fear him only. You fear him only. Because that will break your fear of the Antichrist. You fear the Lord only. And if the Lord wants us. If he wants us to be here, then why don't we want what he wants? Like, I want what the Lord wants. If he wants me to be here, I want to be here. If he wants me to be persecuted, I want to be persecuted. 
if he wants me to be beheaded, I want to be beheaded. Like, do I really want those things? No, but I want him. I want him. I want the Lord. But I believe there will be places of refuge. I believe that those, that one church in Revelation, there's only one church out of seven, the Church of Philadelphia, who are paying attention and the Lord allows them to escape. Does that mean we're in um, a chamber? Does that mean we're hid? Does that mean we're in the wilderness? So I do believe that the woman in the wilderness is true. I believe that the bride uh, may, a lot of the bride may be in the wilderness as long with Israel. I believe there could be arcs, supernatural arcs. I believe there could be chambers, just like the Lord was hid in a chamber after he died, just like Elijah was hid in a cave. And so I'll explain these as my video. And if you stay tuned to the end, I think you'll be blessed because the Lord really poured out his heart to me the last time I was recording. Because like I said, this has been really hard for me to put forth. It's, it's really hard. It's scary. And people don't want to hear it. And they're scared. And I'm scared. And um, But biblically, I can't believe a lie. And I'm not going to perpetuate a lie. And so you need to be ready ready to be with him through three and a half years of tribulation and take note of all the amazing ways he could protect us but also take note that no matter what you're going through if you're with him you are with him forever it doesn't matter all of our suffering is short it is not compared to the glory that we will have forever and ever so I want to give you courage. I want to give you courage in faith that the Lord is going to be with us. And as you guys wait and wait and wait for this first secret rapture to happen, and it doesn't happen, um, I feel like I hope that somebody will tune in and you'll get some courage from the Lord that he's in charge and you're going to be okay with him and in him. Because even like when Stephen was martyred, the first martyr was martyred, like he looked up. Like the minute the stone started hitting him, he looked up. And he could see the angels in heaven. Like he probably didn't even feel pain. He may have only felt pain for a minute. So I want you to have courage, brothers and sisters, all over the world, all the time. Christians have been martyred, and every 11 minutes, even right now, a Christian dies for their faith in the world and I pray that you will watch everything and study with me with the scriptures and get ready for more of the Lord more of him like he doesn't have to lift us out of here for us to experience him in a deeper and more profound way and if he wants us for any reason to be here let's be with him but I've had so many dreams about being fed for three and a half years with the barley cakes, I've had dreams where I'm whisked into a Jewish tribe and I'm safe in this cave and other dreams. So don't also underestimate the ways that he can protect us right here, right here on earth. We could be hidden in plain sight, but please be biblical, please be structural, scriptural, and please throw out the Left Behind series. Just throw it out. Okay, stay tuned. Thank you so much for tuning in. Corey Ten Boom, you know, uh, most of you know Corey Ten Boom. Um, she had a prophetic word years ago that America wouldn't be ready for the things that are happening because we are trapped in a lie about the rapture. Um, so it's a sensitive issue. And, and as I was putting this together, I realized that if the pre-tribulation rapture was true, then there would have to be two raptures. Um, there would have to be a rapture before the tribulation and a rapture immediately after because it's pretty clear that there is one immediately after when Jesus descends and the trumpet blows and the elect gets called up. So, and it's very clear that the saints are here during the tribulation because there's all kinds of scriptures in reference to the saints being here. Like the days are shortened for this Alexei and the little horn is wearing out the saints and 
um, those that, you know, will be beheaded. So I felt the Lord wanted me to do a video to really pinpoint the Left Behind series um, and the false picture that that's painted for the um, rapture happened to be before the tribulation. And every time I post it, I get about 20 comments of people that are say that I don't have enough faith, you know, that about the rapture. But what the Lord wanted me to say um, is the Left Behind series, the Left Behind books, those are not biblical. Those are a lie. And if you want to believe that lie, that's fine. But I find it quite, um, sad that so many of us are believing that lie and um it's 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 a lie that's grown out of arrogancy it's an arrogant lie that um the lord is going to actually rapture these certain people and leave others behind that then have to go through this tribulation it's a lie that's been born out of a false fear of the antichrist that he's too powerful, that he's so powerful, we have to be lifted out of here. Um, scripturally, I've done scriptural study, and I don't believe it's scriptural because it happens on the last trump. It happens in me. I know, you know, in Thessalonians, it talks about being caught up in the air, and we are. We're going to be caught up in the air. We're going to be caught up with him. Um, but if you do a cross-reference with those, most of them are happening when the trumpet sounds, um, the last trumpet. So. I'm not saying that there's not going to be a rapture. There is going to be a rapture. And I'm also not saying that we're not going to be protected during the tribulation. What I'm saying is um, that the Left Behind series created a lie. And everyone thinks it's going to happen just like that. I've even watched people's videos where they're saying they are getting their house in order for other people to stay there during the tribulation like other people who become believers and it's just um absurd to me and it's very arrogant um what i'm just saying is that the left behind series gave us a picture of a lie and do you want to believe in a lie do you want to believe in a lie I mean, just like the prophetic words that came out about Trump having another four years. Do you want to, did you want to believe in that lie? So what I'm just saying is it's not going to be like that. So open your mind to what it could be like during the, the tribulation. It could be the three and a half years in the wilderness, uh, protected and held by the earth. It could be hidden. Um, and I'm going to give all kinds of ways. So this is just a video of, I don't know how it's going to go down either. I just know the Lord wants me to tell you that that whole Left Behind series and the whole idea of us going right when the tribulation starts is not biblical. And these are some ideas and ways that it could work out. So I I'm just want everyone to be prepared. I, I'm a prophetic person who hates lies. I don't want any lies, um, and I tend to be able to help people who are trapped under major um, lies that are like beliefs, false beliefs that get in the mainstream Christian. I'm able to help people get through that because I'm not a mainstream Christian person, and I spend all my time listening to the Lord. Um, and also we have a team of us where we are interpreting the ancient Hebrew and also trying to really, um, you know, pay attention and listen. So I'm just saying maybe just break out of your mind that it has to be a certain way and just open your mind to these ways. And then let's uh, keep praying and seeing what the Lord does. I don't care if the enemy attacks me because I didn't know it was a lie. Until I looked it up, and I've been trying to pray for you all. Okay, our Jesus is big enough. He's big enough. He's the big guy, big daddy. He's gonna descend if he wants to wait. If he wants that, like, why don't we want that? Why don't we want that? Why don't we want what he wants? If he wants to descend first and have his moment, and then we go up, why do I want to get out of that? Because it's scary. Is our Lord big enough 
to get us through the tribulation? Is our Lord big enough to get us to heaven? Is he, isn't he the author and finisher of our faith? Didn't he say, be with us till the end? So I had to take a step back a few weeks because I've been watching so many um, internet videos and about the end times. And, you know, some of them are so, uh, so much fear and some of them are arrogant. Oh, I just had to kind of step back and go like, is my Lord big enough? Is he big enough? Is he big enough? You know, because I have my own fears. Um, so I, uh, the pre-tribulation rapture, um, people that believe that, you know, I didn't know that was a lie. I did not know that was a lie until I started looking up the verses. So please look up my videos on the pre-tribulation and please, um, research it for yourself because I got hit really hard by the enemy when I have tried to expose this lie and that means it's a lie and it's going to try to trap you so that you're not ready and you haven't prepared anything you haven't got your ark ready um so it's really on my heart to tell you again, please look up those scriptures. Matthew 24, immediately after the tribulation, Jesus ascends, the trump blows, and the angels gather his elect. So in Thessalonians as well, it says Jesus ascends, the trump blows, we go up. So Please look it up. Jesus is big enough. He's big enough. He's big enough to get you through the tribulation. He's big enough to get us through the end. We don't need to have an escape route. Christians are getting martyred. There's a Christian martyred every five minutes. They are the bride of Christ. Every pre-tribulation rapture lie is some lie saying to you that God is not big enough to get you to heaven. And if you research it, it came out of a Jesuit priest in the 1830s and he pen named himself a rabbi so that people would actually read it. And then it got over to Scotland and the scroll got in a trance and said there's going to be a secret rapture. And I mean, this stuff's crazy. Why did it get so mainstream with this book? Uh, I didn't read it, so because I've never been in the mainstream. I've never been in mainstream Christianity. I don't even know what that is. Jesus, walking with Jesus is like, you do it with him and and then you have fellowship with some other people, but don't be basing this time on a book or a lie because the Antichrist is rising and you're gonna be waiting in your apartment and your kids are gonna be waiting with you and you're not gonna have made a place to live where you could possibly live off the grid. Um, you're going to be using all the electronics and everything where you can be tracked and um, God's big enough. There's going to be miracles and the witnesses, the two witnesses are going to be there witnessing the 144,000 sealed tribe, 12,000 of each tribe of Israel are going to be witnessing. I mean, it's going to be Powerful. He's going to have people, the eagle lift up the woman and help us in the wilderness. So there's some little clues that we have um, in Matthew 24, 31. And he shall send his angels with a great 
sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from the end of heaven to another. Now, um, the Feast of Trumpets, uh, you know, is when the Revelation uh, 12 sign happens, September 23rd, 2017. Um, so it's interesting that it's the sound of the trumpet. could be around the Feast of Trumpets. Um, also, it says the one about the trump of God, the last trump. Um, oh, where was that? Oh, yeah, the last trump. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 52. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So this is a rapture verse people use to um, talk about the rapture. Um, at the last trump, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Now there's trump again. There's the trumpet. Is that the last feast of trumpets that is going to be celebrated on the earth? Is that the last feast of the trumpets? Is, it, is that the last trump? I don't know, but I thought that was interesting. Um, and also in 1 Thessalonians, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. The trump again. There's the sound of the trump. Is it the um, feast of the, the, tr the trumps? Um, so the dead shall rise, uh, and Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord wherever comfort one another with these words. And um, anyway, in the last days, also Revelation 10, 7, in the day of the voice of the seventh angel, he will begin to sound and the mystery of God will be finished. So I found it interesting that three of those verses, um, there is a sound of a trump. And it makes me think of the Feast of Trumpets. So, um, Anyway, so, you know, all of us have our different ideas, but I tend to believe that the rapture is going to happen towards the end of the seven years, the end of the tribulation, because there are certain things that point to it. For instance, in Revelation, um, where it says, Six. when Revelation 13, um, where the beast is rising up, um, that's given his 42 months to rise up and blaspheme God, Revelation 13. And to him it was given to, and it was given to him, the beast, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. So if we're all raptured already during the tribulation, who are these saints that are here that, the beast is making war with are they just got saved i mean i don't know so we're, definitely there are saints here during the tribulation that the beast is making war with um the other thing is the two witnesses so the two olive branches and the two witnesses which are going to be preaching continually during that time of the beast oh i got i get the picture of which are probably going to be rising up here soon or right at the time of the last three and a half years, um, are they alone here <laughs> during the tribulation? They're alone. They're the only two witnesses um, alone here on the earth witnessing. Um, I doubt it. That doesn't sound right that he would just have two witnesses. Um, so there's obviously saints here. There's obviously the beast making war with the saints. There's the two witnesses. And then there's the 144,000 the 12,000 from each tribe of Israel, the witnesses that are also going to be rising up as it's prophesied in Revelation. Uh, the Lord has told me himself to prepare, that I need to prepare for the tribulation, as if I have to go through the whole tribulation. So I myself am going to get as safe as possible. I'm going to... Um, try to be in a position where I can at least help some people. Uh, I, um, I don't want to be frantic when the beast system 
requires the mark of the beast. Like I, I've already been processing that. How am I going to do everything? I have no idea. But I'll do a talk on that. Uh, the Lord gave me about the wedding at the end of the world. Like how, you know, he's he's going to marry us. He's going to marry us. Like he, he has a feast prepared. There may be feasting in the midst of our enemies. There may be a song in the night. Um, I love this scripture in Isaiah 24. Um, Isaiah 24 is where the earth is reeling and everything's being spoiled and we're mourning and and um, it's all the stuff that's going to be happening during the apocalypse. But, you know, in the middle of that horrendous chapter um, is verse 14. It says, well, let me start like in 12. In the city is left desolate. The gate is smitten with destruction. And thus it will be in the midst of the land among the people. People, There shall be a shaking of an olive tree as the gleaning grapes from the vintage is done. They shall lift their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. They shall cry a Lord aloud from the sea. Wherefore I glorify ye the Lord in the fires, even the name of the Lord God of Israel in the isles of the sea. Now let's read that again. They shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord, and they shall cry aloud from the sea. Glorify ye the Lord in the fires, even the name of the Lord God of Israel. Like, isn't that amazing? Like, that gives me the picture that he is going to strengthen us, and he is going to pour out a song in the night. He's going to pour out his song. Like, we will be glorifying him in the midst of all of this trouble and tribulation and we will be uh you know strengthened by him we have the holy spirit over us we'll have courage probably beyond any courage we've ever had i'm preparing for all this because you know what if it happens before or in the middle of the seven years which would be coming up in a year and a half or so that's great. Then I'm going to go up with him. But you know, the Lord, I know he wants every person to be saved before he comes and gets us all. And um, I'm going to prepare so that I don't have to be unprepared. And then I can be a wise servant. So hopefully he can make me some a ruler over his goods so I can help others through the hard time. Well, I felt my spirit um, rapture warning. You know, we may not get raptured until the last trump, until the last trumpet sounds. And that could very well be in September of 2024 after the tribulation is over, if this timeline is correct. Uh, but it could be any time uh, when, after the last trump has sounded, after there's no more feasts of trumpets, if, if those trumpets mean anything. Um, and I think they do. I heard the sound of the trumpet before I even knew anything about the Feast of Israel. I heard the sound of the trumpets in heaven, and the Lord was alerting me uh, to study the feasts and understand the Feast um, of Israel. So the gathering, uh, the Feast of Trumpets. So the Feast of Trumpets is the Rosh Hashanah, which is the head of the year. It begins the Jewish civil year. And this is a biblical festival known as Yom Terah, the Day of Trumpets, because the Israelites were to blow trumpets on that day. Leviticus 23-24, a shofar or ram's heart is blown, and it is calling the faithful the ten days of repentance culminating in the Yom Kippur, or Day of Atonement. Now, the Revelation 12 sign happened on the Feast of Trumpets in 2017. So, I thought that was very significant. And in terms of the Lord calling us up at the last trump, or the last trumpet, like I've been talking about, um, I think the scripture is very important to read aloud and really think about this. So in Re in Matthew 24, 29 through 31, Matthew 24, <clears throat> immediately after the tribulation of those days, 
meaning the end times, the tribulation of those days. The sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven be shaken. Then shall the sun, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to another. So in this passage, when they see the Son of Man appear in heaven, coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, at that time he will send his angels with the sound of a trumpet to gather his elect. Now I'm his elect and we're his elect. And it sounds to me like he's coming, the horn blows, and then he gathers us. So it sounds to me in Matthew 24, it's happening all at the same time. And this is definitely after the tribulation. It's when he's coming to stand on the Mount of Olives. Because I never noticed how many trumps and trumpet uh, signs there were in the possible rapture, us being caught up with him. Okay, so this is totally interesting to me. Okay, so now in 1 Thessalonians 14... 16 through 18, and it says the same thing. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, the shofar of God, the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So everything I've just read gives me the reason to believe that after the tribulation, the Lord will come and we'll be called up immediately with the trumpets that the Lord has set out. And then we will be with them in the air. So it could happen really quickly, you know, at the same time. But everything I've read is about the sound of the trumpets, the feast of trumpets. Um, no man knows the day or hour. But I, I think that we need to be prepared to go to the end, just like Jesus did for us on the cross. I think prosperity, Christianity... Um, Disneyland Christianity, um, we're not going to suffer Christianity is not in my Bible. So I think we comfort one another with these words that when he, he comes, we'll go up. And until then, some of us are going to be called to be martyrs. Some of us are going to be called to suffer. Some of us have already suffered. Some of us are going to be called to take care of others. Some of us are going to be fed supernaturally. Some of us are going to be scared. And you know what? The Lord is going to empower us with the Holy Spirit. Um, I think we need to like be prepared for the whole thing. And then be happily surprised if it doesn't happen. That is my word from the Lord. The lie is so you will not be prepared for the tribulation, which is coming really soon. And just a little bit of background to some other kind times of tribulation. Um, World War II. So two rabbis went and warned, were trying to warn all the Jews to get out of Germany. And they wanted them to get out and get to Israel and get to safe places. But a lot of Jewish people went to their rabbis and said, should we get out of Germany? And he said, no. They said, no, everything will be fine. Well, these same Jews, while they were in the concentration camps, before they were incinerated, 
wrote little notes and scraps of paper that got back to people that they were so angry that their rabbis told them they didn't need to leave Germany. So I believe right now there's going to be Christians, you, you guys are going to be trapped. When that tribulation starts, when the Antichrist takes power and the three and a half years starts, there is no time left to prepare. And you end up being in a trap and you won't be ready to go through the tribulation or get through it in a way that's going to be easier. She says um, that there will be a lie in the church, uh, or there, it already is, that people will be believing in this pre-tribulation rapture, and they won't be ready. Um, in China, their pastors, before Mao took over uh, and started torturing and killing the Christians, um, the pastors were telling them, oh, don't worry, everything's going to be fine. You don't have to go through tribulation. We're, you know, married to the Lord. And um, so right now there's just a disbelief in the church, especially in America, that we are not going to have to go through the tribulation. And the, the, the scriptures are clear. Every rapture scripture is clear that it is on the last trumpet and two of them are very clear that Jesus comes first and then there's the last trumpet, then we're gathered up. Um, all of it is at the end. There is no indication in the scripture about a secret rapture or a pre-tribulation rapture. Let's give each other courage and, and faith, not Disneyland Christianity. Come on. And pastors, I don't have anything to say. You better get on board. You better not be teaching people the wrong thing. Because, whoa, whoa to those shepherds. Whoa. Get on board with the word of God. We're in the last days, guys. Because there were some major misconceptions in the body of Christ, I think that that is what throws people off. And they were basically a lie and some misinterpretations of the Hebrew. So I think because the enemy is always trying to thwart the times because the enemy doesn't even know the times. Only the Lord knows the time. He set the time in motion from the beginning of his creation. So the enemy is wanting to deceive the body of Christ. And um, there's a couple major lies that he has put forth that I really believe are very deceptive. And will cause people to not be looking for the proper timeline of the Lord. So the first one is the pre-tribulation rapture lie. <laughs> but that lie has led to people who even discovered that 2017 could be the year of the last seven. Because they believed that they were going to be raptured. Before the seven years started, they don't even talk about 2017 anymore. So that's kind of sad to me. Um, the second lie uh, or misconception is that there has to be a third temple. So many Christians are going to be deceived when they're looking for an actual third temple to be built when actually the Daniel in Hebrew is specifically could be a temple but it could be a tent it could be a tabernacle it is in Jerusalem and it could already be built so I have videos on that the Hadamid um, the the sacrifice um, people think there has to be a sacrifice animal sacrifices happening which is also a misconception so because that word can be translated meaning a continual, like a light burning, um, like bread sacrifices that you offering bread to the Lord, um, something that is continual, 
Um, that's another misconception. So the other one is that the Antichrist was going to make a peace agreement at the beginning of the seven years, but it's very clear in the research that we've done that misconception that the Antichrist was going to kick off the last seven is just a matter of interpreting the Hebrew, which was very clear that the Lord himself confirms his covenant for the last seven. And he's in charge of the last seven. So I have great videos on that too. I'm not going to go over it all again. But I think those four misconceptions have really led to people being led off the track so that the believers um, are not going to be looking for the correct signs. So um, I also believe that the Lord lets people up to delusions and lies. I don't think he really wants everyone to know. I mean, that's just my opinion, but um, Jesus hid himself from the Pharisees quite often when he was done with what he was going to say, and he decided to hide, and his wisdom is hidden from the wise and given to babes. Um, a lot of stuff about the Lord hiding, and I don't, I really feel um, that the information is not going to go mainstream. So I wouldn't be looking for that. But those who are looking and watching for the Lord, um, really these signs that happened, these prophetic fulfillments and signs that happened in 2017 and 2018 um, and still been happening, you, you can't deny, you just cannot deny the timing of 2017. I believe that there is not a rapture right before the uh, three and a half years, which I believe is starting really soon. But I believe there is a type of a rapture, like a like it won't be a rapture in the way that Americans think after they read the Left Behind series. This tri tribulation starts, which I believe will start in around Passover 2021, like really soon here. So, um. I don't believe it'll be in the way people think. So um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, the chambers. Um, the, the, the Isaiah 26, you know, it talks about enter into your chambers until this be overpassed. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Noah, as in the days of Noah. So Noah did not leave the earth. Um, he was in an ark. And he was on the earth, but he was protected from the flood. Um, the sign is no sign given until, um, except the sign of Jonah. So um, Jonah was hid in the belly of a whale for three and a half days. Um, our Lord was in a tomb. Um, he was hidden in a tomb, and that was um, so. The so I believe the resurrection week. I mean the. Crucifixion week, uh, the week of the crucifixion is um, like like a symbol. Those seven days are like a symbol of the seven years. I believe we're already nearing the three and a half mark. And for those of you who um, don't think that or um, who think I'm way too early or whatever, I mean, in one way, um, you'll be happy. It'll be almost over. <laughs> so... Um, but if you watch my end times videos um, and uh, calculating the last seven, like really studying um, the subtlety of the Lord and his coming, but the the subtlety, but but clear, clear to those who, who are really watching and don't have their mind all locked into a mainstream Christianity thing. Really, biblically, scripturally, there is no possible way that it's going to happen um, on, around Passover 2021 before the tribulation. Not in the way people think. And that's probably why I just started thinking it's just not in the way they think. Like we're going to be whisked out and then that whole left behind thing and everyone's like running around crazy and whatever. 
um, the scripture in Matthew where one's taken and one's left is actually a judgment on the Lord. Um, the correct uh, Hebrew translation in that is that the one taken is a judgment. Um, then the one left is the, the Christian because um, God is out operating in his judgment and snatching them out. So um, just hear me out a little bit more, especially for those who are like, sure, the rapture. But, you know, um, a lot of people were sure that Trump was going to be reelected. There was a lot of false prophets out there that were saying Trump was going to be reelected re for four years. And they deceived a lot of people and people got um, off guard and they got... Um, you know, they were deceived. So listen, I said clearly, I don't feel that it's necessary that Trump wins another four years. And I don't want people to get hopeful for that because we're so close to the end. So um, there, it's the same with the rapture. Um, if you are hanging on that with all of your heart and it's not going to happen maybe the way you think, I just don't want people to be deceived. But the good news is, um, studying this biblically, there could be these ark places. There could be these belly of the whale places. There is clearly the woman in the wilderness um, where she is helped by the earth for 1260 days. Um, there's also 1290 days. Um, so I had, I, had, I believe that the, the three and a half years in the wilderness, um, is something that the Lord will provide for. Um, I don't have food saved up for three and a half years. I don't have enough water saved up for three and a half years. I didn't have enough money or, or the wherewithal to set up some kind of wilderness experience. You know, I wish I did, but, um, but I didn't, and I. But I did move to a more wilderness place, and I, I felt, um, you know, clear to save up some food at least for six months, um, for transitional time before we're maybe in that wilderness time. But I, my dreams have been very clear about um, the minute that the real chaos starts or whatever. I'm, I'm just set aside. Uh, I've joined a Jewish uh, wedding ceremony. Um, I've gotten married to a king, and when I see all the chaos and all the people with the looting and the poverty and um, the chaos that is going to happen, you know, when the World War III ensues and these natural disasters that are coming up, um, I've always been just set aside, but I'm not taken out of my body up, in, up to Jesus because Matthew 24 is really clear, really, really clear. The Jesus ascends... And the trumpet blows, and then he calls the elect up to himself. So he descends. So um, I believe during this wilderness time, uh, there'll be these chambers. And I have a little, uh, some little cartoons to show you here that might be interesting. Um, I believe that it could be um, like the t tents, like huts. It could be, be like a cave, like Elijah. Um, I've also had a very clear dream that of three and a half barley cakes. So three and a half barley cakes were given to me. And I know that that symbolized the three and a half years. And I believe that meant that the Lord will provide for me those bar those barley cakes. And we know that Elijah was fed with the supernatural um, cakes that kept him going. Um, the barley cakes, of course, are symbolic of the children of Israel when they left and they took the um, unleavened breads with them. Um, so I also believe there'll be the hidden manna and the manna. Um, the Revelation 2, it talks about the hidden manna. Um, and that could be all kinds of provision for his believers. Um, I do believe the wise servants watching will have um, something to share. So, you know, we don't know. We're all just knowing part. We know a little bit and here and there. But I'm just, um, um, I don't know why the Lord wants me to keep talking because I don't have that many followers or anything. But he asked me to feed his sheep. And so I'm going to feed his sheep until I can't anymore. And um, I will feed them with truth. I'm a true shepherd. I'm not going to tell you that we're, you know, I didn't tell you that Trump was going to win. And we were going to be prospering for four years. I kept saying we might not win. 
and we should be ready because it's the end times. Um, I'm not going to lie to you and say, you know, you're not going to be persecuted. I'm not going to, um, you know, I'm going to try to be a true shepherd with my thoughts about the rapture. And that's why I posted the video also about my thoughts about the rapture. So anyway, um, be, you know, just don't do anything normal. <laughs> just don't do anything normal. You know, just go with the Lord says. Do what the Lord says. Be in the Lord. Um, he is your hiding place. He's your resting place. Um, he is, I love all those words about Jesus hiding. Like, um, that's my other thought about the rapture is, um, he could hide us in plain sight. Like Jesus hid all the time. He would just hide himself from the Pharisees when he was done talking or he, it wasn't his time, you know, to be persecuted. And, we don't know what the picture is going to be looking like, but there's so many prophetic words about us being here, you know, whether we're being protected, uh, whether we're helping each other, whether we're having manna, whether we're being hidden, like I said, in plain sight. Um, because we know biblically there will be Christians being persecuted. There will be Christians um, being put in prison and being beheaded. And, um, it's, you know, super grievous, uh, but we also know that there'll be places of refuge. Uh, there'll be um, all the provision and hiding of the Lord. Like, I, even as I'm saying this right now, I just, like, I, I feel I'm in a protected area. Like, I see angelic beings around me, like the hosts, like Elijah when he said, Elisha, servant and he said you know was afraid and Elisha said don't be afraid more are with us than against us and I really believe that more are with us than against us um I really encourage people not to be afraid of the beast system or the antichrist but to be in the fear of the Lord um, I really believe that that rapture uh, lie came about, the Left Behind series and everything, because their God is too small. Whoever thought we have to be out of here is their God is too small. Our, our God is big enough. He's big enough to hide us. He's big enough to transport us. He's big enough to um, be with us. So um, please don't let your God be too small, okay? Let him be so big that he is in control of all of this time. And his covenant is with us and strengthening us for these seven years. And so as we enter into the terrible day of the Lord and that day, day of darkness and those last three and a half years, um, which are upon us, I believe everything's going to be escalating so fast. We're not, you won't be able to process it anymore. So just try to, um, you know, try to take what you know and remember the Lord's character because his character is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's going to be the same Lord that took care of you. Um, but I have a strong uh, just feeling right now of his presence, and I have a, I have a strong um word for those who are listening i'm saying to those who are listening and preparing and and humble that you will be with god that the lord will be with you and he will um take you into the wilderness or into his places of refuge that he will shelter you and help you um and that he is with you and more with you than against you um, I say to those who are arrogant and, and they go, well, the tribulation's coming and we don't have to worry about it because <laughs> we're going to be whisked out of here. I, 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 uh, I give you a warning right now. You better not be arrogant and don't think you have it in a basket. Don't think you have this all figured out because the Lord never came the way people thought that he was going to come and even his own people didn't recognize him. And when I um, post something and it doesn't fit that mainstream Christian seven-year um, tribulation and then we're raptured out thing, I get criticism. And um, that's okay. But I'm just saying to you that, you know what? The Pharisees thought they knew. They thought they knew what was happening. And I'm saying to you that I believe the Lord is doing things a little bit differently. 
Um, and he gives his wisdom to babes. He doesn't always give it to those who are um, have the biggest followings or are the loudest or or whatever. So I know there were thousands, and you know there were. I know there were uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of people um, believing false prophecies about Trump's uh, re-election, and. So I'm saying there could be thousands and thousands and thousands of people believing that the last seven years is, is going to be a certain way, and it's not. So I'm just, you know, I'm a true shepherd. I hope I'm always speaking from the Lord. I am the biggest sinner of all. I have no good thing in myself to talk about at all. Um, but I love the Lord, and I love his sheep, and... I love truth. I hate lies. I hate lies. I hate them. And my whole walk with the Lord has been um, to go into thought beliefs or belief systems. Um, like when I attacked um, the, you know, breaking apart of the lie of Islam. And I was, I was um, confronted with the six uh, principalities over... Islam and it was it was terrifying and they tried to scare me so I wouldn't go in and break that lie and I said no way I'm coming in to break that lie and I spent six years with a lot of suffering and a lot of prayer um, just going in I mean I want to feel like um, Wonder Woman you know like when she when it got wor the worst she she rushed in so um, at this point, we're so close to um, this turning point, this three and a half years starting. We're close, so close to the worst tribulation that we've ever had on the planet, the fourth beast, the false prophet, and we're so close to that. And I, I want to rush in. I want to rush in and just um, grab, you know, the sheep and just say, you know, have courage, be strong in the power of his might. Don't trust in some miraculous thing uh, except for the Lord himself because the Lord himself is your miracle. The Lord himself is your rapture. The Lord himself is your salvation. It's all about him. It's all about him and coming into that intimate place with him and leave everything behind. Just leave everything behind. Get ready to exodus uh, the world system. Get ready to leave behind your your cell phones and your internet or whatever you had before as he um, comes for you and to help you and strengthen you. And don't think you have it all figured out because the Lord has it figured out and he's the only one that does. He's the only one that does. Just fear him. I speak against arrogancy. I speak against every false way and leave behind all your greed and your idolatry. Um, just get closer and closer to him every day because he's coming really soon. And before he comes is the great tribulation and the 1260 days that we will see him in a way we've never seen him before, whether we're in a protected place or whether we are being called to go with him. But the church will be hidden during that three and a half years. Um, I forgot to talk about that. So this picture of the witness, this picture of the guy that was in sackcloth and ashes um, at the ceremony, inauguration ceremony, um, is a picture of the three and a half years of tribulation. Um, the church will not be meeting together publicly. We may be underground. Um, but the church is not going to be visible, I don't believe. I don't believe we're going to be out there witnessing, and um, there will be the, the two witnesses and the 144,000 witnesses. So, um, you know, so that intimacy with the Lord, you know, just really um, the beast system is going to make things hell. It's going to wear out the saints. Um, those who have been watching and praying may escape. But we may not escape in the way people think. I really, I could just feel the Lord's heart. I could just feel his heart. You just trust in him. You trust in him. You trust in him and him alone, in his character, in his being. 
uh, in him we move and live and have our being. And he is able. He is able. So um, I'm breaking that lie. You know, I'm breaking the lies. I'm breaking the lies and that arrogancy. And I pray you just open your mind and but be be really open to the Lord. Just be really open to the Lord and stay close to him. Like John, the apostle, the one that stayed all the way, and and the Marys who stayed all the way through the to the crucifixion. All right, God bless you. I'll be posting as much as I can, and like I said, I really encourage you to follow my blog because that way, even if I'm not posting right now for a while, but if I get shut down, I'll be posting stuff on there and you will get a notification in your email. So that seems to be the best way to stay connected with me if you want to be connected with me. Um, I won't be posting sensitive information on YouTube. Um, I'll be posting that on um, Rumble right now and then later on my blog or whatever method the Lord gives me. Living stones built together for Him we are his body we are his bride new jerusalem a holy nation a spiritual house Jerusalem.